Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to find the derivatives of secant and cosecant functions with you. We're gonna do this the same way we did the tangent and cotangent functions. Remember that with these trig derivatives, you can always find it by using the quotient rule. So thinking of secant x here as a quotient, we're actually going to do this as the derivative with respect to x of one over cosine x. We'll go ahead and use our quotient rule now, low d high minus high d low on top. So the low function is cosine x. Derivative of the high function, actually since the derivative of the high function is a constant, that's zero, minus high d low, so the high function is one. The derivative of our low function, derivative of cosine x would be negative sine x. And remember our quotient rule says all over the square of what lies below, and what's below is cosine x, so this is actually cosine squared x from our quotient rule. All right, looking here, zero times cosine x is going to be zero for this first part. Negative one times negative sine x, that will just give us sine of x over cosine squared x. And we wanna notice here I have a different number of cosine functions on the bottom than I do of sine functions on the top, right? So what I want to do is go ahead and break this up. I'm going to break it up into a fraction that has one copy of cosine x in the bottom and another copy of the cosine x that makes cosine squared x in the bottom of the other one, right? So what is sine x? Well, it really just be one times sine x or sine x times one. I'll just go ahead and call it one times sine x. Right, so I still have sine x here and cosine squared x. I just have it broken up into pieces so that we can see what these things are more nicely than just leaving it this way. Now, what is one over cosine x? Well, reciprocal of cosine x we know is secant x, right? And what is sine x over cosine x? Well, that is tangent of x, right? So here we can see that our derivative for secant of x is actually secant x times tangent x. We'll work this one out a similar way, cosecant x, the derivative with respect to x, we will think of that cosecant x as its reciprocal identity. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so this is really one over sine of x. And using our quotient rule here, low d high minus high d low, all over the square of what lies below. So we have low times d high, derivative of the high function is zero, minus high, which is one, d low, the derivative of sine x is cosine x, all over the square of what lies below, and what lies below is sine x, so we have sine squared x as our bottom function squared. We go ahead and multiply by zero and get nothing here. Negative one times cosine x actually will give us negative cosine x here. And this time I end up with more copies of sine x on the bottom than I have cosine x on the top. So let's go ahead and break this up. Now I'll need a negative out front, so we'll say negative, and I'm going to have one fraction that's over sine x times another thing with a denominator of sine x to give me the sine squared x. And I'll go ahead and break this cosine x up into, say, one times cosine x. So now we have that, and we can go ahead and say what this is, right? We have negative. What is the reciprocal of sine? One over sine x. We know that from the beginning, right? That's cosecant of x. And then cosine x over sine x, we should know that that is cotangent x, the reciprocal of tangent, right? Okay, so we get that the derivative with respect to x of cosecant x is actually negative cosecant x cotangent x. So these are similar. You can see when we take the derivative of secant, we get secant and tangent. When we take the derivative of cosecant, we get cosecant and cotangent, but we have a negative here. Okay, so we get the cofunctions here, and we get a different sign when we have cosecant than when we have secant. All right, good luck learning, memorizing, and working with your trig derivatives. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next video.